Alright, so I want to talk about Game of the Years because, in all honesty, I think they're dumb. Each year I'm forced to hear about the discourse of which game is best and which game deserves the title Game of the Year like I'm supposed to care. All this title really does is allow the winner the chance to resell their game with the new box art claiming that it was Game of the Year and now you have to buy it. I get that this is supposed to be a celebration of video gaming for the year, but I also think that labeling one game as the very best for one particular year is one of the worst ways that we could possibly celebrate this hobby. On one hand, it's great to have a spotlight to showcase and appreciate these games, but on the other, it can just start to feel like a popularity contest, leaving tons of amazing games to be overlooked for what the AAA companies are doing. And that is not to say that every AAA game is bad, like some people like to say. Just that, of course a company and publisher with much more capital put into a game and its marketing is going to have much more exposure compared to, let's say, a smaller team or even an indie developer. To prove my point, I would like to go over this year's nominees for Game of the Year category at specifically the Game Awards. We've got Alan Wake 2, Baldur's Gate 3, Marvel Spider-Man 2, Resident Evil 4, Super Mario Bros. Wonder, and lastly but not leastly, The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Wow, uh, a lot of sequels going on here. Actually, if you really wanted to get into it, there are technically no original games here. They are all following an existing franchise or even a previous title, which isn't to say they can't stand out on their own and be great games, just that, well, that's not important. But what is important is that all six of these games are fairly popular. Definitely some more than others. But these aren't like underground games that have large but quiet fan base to nominate them. No, these games are the games that everyone is talking about from announcement to the months after release. Well, maybe all except Alan Wake 2. I genuinely had not heard anything about this game until IGN posted a review of it. Kind of surprised they didn't give it a 7. This could easily just be a me thing. I'm not into the whole survival horror genre all that much, which is probably why I hadn't heard a whole lot about Resident Evil 4 as well. So take that with a grain of salt. Something I am into, however, is stupid Nintendo games, and wouldn't you know it, there's two of them in the list this year. There was just about as much hype as you could possibly have going into the release of Tears of the Kingdom, and thankfully, I would say that the game had lived up to that hype, but man, things could have been really bad if that were not the case. And of course, a new take on the side-scrolling Mario platformers was going to get a lot of coverage and hype as well. Other two games that we're dealing with here are a Dungeons & Dragons game that I think lets you have sex with a bear if you want. Uh, I'm not sure on that, and well, there's not really a transition into the next game, but there's also Marvel Spider-Man 2. Originally, I wanted to talk about how I'm honestly just a hater and think that almost all of these games have some reason not to be in the running for the title, like Game of the Year, but decided against that, mostly because I'm too lazy to defend any of my arguments because at the end of the day this whole thing is really just a non-issue with no real stakes on the line but also because I've only played two of the six games on the list here, so it's kind of hard for me to make a case like that that isn't just blatant surface level biases on my part. I will give a short and sweet explanation of each game and my opinions on the nominees list because I do think that some of these games here are good examples of why I dislike the game of the year running, particularly this year. So yeah, this is all just my opinion which really should not be taken seriously at all. Also, I am sure that all of these games are great games, and I have heard mostly good things about them all. But yeah, I'll just go ahead and get right into things with going down the list of nominees for this year, starting with Alan Wake 2. It's just not widely appealing with its survival horror genre to the broader player base. I think that majority of Baldur's Gate 3's hype was just from the fact that you could customize your players. Uh, parts down there, which is a dumb reason for a game to blow up in popularity. But this is the world we live in, I guess. Spider-Man 2 is an amazing game that was everything I was hoping for in a sequel. I am extremely biased towards this game since the first Spider-Man from 2018 is easily in my personal list of top 10 video games of all time, so yeah, of course I think the sequel deserves to be on the list of Game of the Year. Resident Evil 4, on the other hand, can just go off out of here. Oh, whoops, sorry, I accidentally hit my soundboard there. Uh, where was I? Oh yeah, Resident Evil 4 can just take off out of here because in what world does it make sense to have a remake for Game of the Year? The original game was released back in 2005. This is clearly not a game from 2023 and I genuinely do not think that it should be in the running for Game of the Year. 
Super Mario Bros. Wonder honestly surprised me that it made the list, but good on the game for doing so. I actually think that's a pretty solid title to nominate, just again surprised that it did get nominated. And lastly we have Tears of the Kingdom, which I don't think anyone was going to be surprised was going to be on the running for Game of the Year. If I was tasked with personally picking the Game of the Year off of these nominees, no surprise my pick would go towards Marvel Spider-Man 2 without hesitation. The game is a ton of fun, has a great story, adds new features to let it stand apart from the other two Insomniac Spider-Man games, and addresses a lot of the complaints people had with the first game. Also, as a pretty big comic book fan myself, it was super cool to see some of the characters and storylines the developers decided to implement into the game. Uh, not to spoil anything of course, but there was stuff in here that I had never expected to see when I first booted up the game. The only other game off of the list of nominees that I had played was Tears of the Kingdom, and I do think that it was a good game, I just don't think that it stood out enough from the first game to really be my personal pick for Game of the Year. I do plan to play Mario Bros. Wonder soon, and I'm really excited for that game because it looks really good, but I just kind of have a feeling that if Zelda isn't beating out Spider-Man for my pick of Game of the Year, Mario isn't really going to have much of a chance either. I, you know, unless it's like Super Mario Galaxy 3 or something crazy like that. Uh, but, you know, one can only dream, I suppose. I do think ultimately my problem is that I have not played most of the games and thus have zero interest in them being crowned Game of the Year. Well, that and I still refuse to accept a remake being in the running. I just feel like giving a game the title of Game of the Year is up to each individual. Not everyone's gonna play the same games each year, or even plays games released that year. I'm sure there's someone out there whose goal was to experience a bunch of retro games and gain a whole new understanding from the history and evolution of gaming, and their Game of the Year might just happen to be Super Mario Bros. 3. A legendary platform in its own respect, but obviously that doesn't fit the criteria to be Game of the Year in 2023. I'm also sure there's tons of people who only play yearly sports game releases and their game of the year is the newest Madden. So with that said, I would like to present my personal top 6 games that I've played this year. Yeah, it might be a cop out, but I will keep Spider-Man 2 and Tears of the Kingdom in my list since they were two games I legitimately did enjoy playing through the most this year. Next, I would say it would have to be Sonic Frontiers. I picked up this game way back in March and finally got around to playing through it during the Labor Day weekend because I ended up getting sick with a pretty bad cold. I barely remember anything from the weekend aside from rotting away watching TV, but I do remember how much I enjoyed this game, and I wasn't expecting to have as much fun as I did while playing through the game. I'm not the biggest fan in the world of the Sonic the Hedgehog games, but I did find myself wanting to do and complete just about everything that you could in Sonic Frontiers. The fourth game that I would like to include in my list for Game of the Year would be Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War. Honestly, a very random game that I picked up and played more out of curiosity than desire. I started to go down the nostalgic rabbit hole of old games and so I started to play Black Ops 2 again recently on Steam. I also played a bunch of Black Ops 3 multiplayer with some friends one weekend and it got me kind of curious what the newer Call of Duty experiences would be like, especially after hearing almost nothing but negative reviews for so long. Now, I wouldn't say that this was the best game ever, nor would I even say it's the best Call of Duty I've ever played, but I really had fun playing through Cold War. The campaign is short, but I thought the story was interesting enough to warrant continuing. I also think there is something fun about the arcade shooter structure to each level, especially on the higher difficulties, and the multiplayer is really fun in this game, especially with all of the remastered maps. I don't know, I, I just kind of had fun playing this game, and that's why it's on my list. Call of Duty is also far outside of my normal genre of games that I like to play and it was a really refreshing experience to kind of play through something that I'm not so used to. What is not a new experience for me however is Minecraft. Yeah I got swept up into the annual two weeks of Minecraft phase except mine lasted a little bit longer. I dove head first into a new world doing just about everything that I could. There is a lot and I mean a lot that I could say about Minecraft but this year was the first in a while that I had been this committed to the game and I sunk a lot of time into it and that's definitely why it's going to be on my list for game of the year. And lastly for my 6th entry, it's going to have to go to Ark Survival Ascended which I, I know is a remake like Resident Evil 4 but this is my list and I get to choose the games. I love the original Ark for as much flaws and issues as it has. So, it is no shocker that I have dumped over 100 hours into the remake already. It's become my 5th most played game on Steam in terms of hours, within just a few weeks of owning it. This is more than a commitment, it's an addiction. But yeah, Dinosaur Game is fun. 
and I have probably played Ark more than anything else this year somehow, so I couldn't not put it on the list. So yeah, that's my list. We've got Spider-Man 2, Tears of the Kingdom, Sonic Frontiers, Call of Duty Cold War, Minecraft, and Ark. Uh, not the best list of games, I suppose, but those are the games that I enjoyed the most this year. As for my game of the year, that would have to be... Drum rolls, please. Ooh, the anticipation is killing me. Dungeon Munchies! Wait, wait, what? Yeah, I threw a curveball in there and chose a game I hadn't talked about. Look, it's my stupid list and I can do whatever I want. I picked this game up because, ooh, sexy anime waifu on the cover art. And of course the game seemed mildly entertaining from the back of the box with its Pokédex collection system and all. But man, did I get way more than I had ever expected with this game. I will admit that I don't think this would be a game for everyone, but for me it ticked all the right boxes that I needed when I played the game. The gameplay is just really fun and addictive in my opinion. You were always seeing new things and upgrading your equipment constantly. I also found it really rewarding figuring out just which loadout worked best for me. And on top of it all, the game had a story that is way deeper and more interesting than I would have ever expected. It is kind of hard to explain this game, but if you even seem somewhat curious about Dungeon Munchies, please go pick it up and give it a try. It's not a huge commitment, at most it probably takes 10 hours or so to complete, so yeah, seriously check this game out if you are interested. But the main reason I have to say Dungeon Munchies is my personal game of the year is because it kind of got me back into gaming. I had gone on somewhat of a break where I just really wasn't in the mood to pick up any new games and play them, a bit of a funk if you will, and one day I just decided to pick up Dungeon Munchies and give it a go, and I was hooked nearly instantly. And if a video game is good at anything, it should be good at being fun. And not every game is going to be fun to every person, that is why I think that the award for game of the year is so dumb. A good example of this is from another game that I have played this year being Tunic. I hate this game. I genuinely think it is one of my least favorite games I have ever played, and I honestly regret picking the game up. But that is far from the popular opinion online, and that's okay. If you love Tunic, more power to you, I just personally don't enjoy the game as much as most others do. But like I said though, I am sure that every game on the list of official nominees for this year's Game of the Year award is great. I mean, nothing can be worse than Stray being nominated last year, so at least there's that going for us. But you know, don't let some stupid award show or marketing tactic tell you one game is better than others. I think it's easy to overlook the fact that video games are a form of art on every level, and art is subjective to each individual. And one exception to this, however, is the fact that Lethal Company is the true game of the year. I mean, it's so good it's not even in the running because 99% of the vote would go towards it and the other votes would just be misclicks.